Hi, this is Sean. Welcome to my channel. And today we're going to do practice with me. A few Barry Harris phrases, not from Barry Harris directly, but the kinds of things that I learned from him in terms of using the dominant scale with simple rules. There are more complex rules as well. We're going to keep them simple because I really believe in practicing the simplest things and squeezing as much juice out of them as possible. I'll show you everything I can that I do. I don't know what's going to happen yet. We're going to find out together. Please do hit like on this video. It's really helping us to grow so I can do more of this for you. Please do hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you know when I upload new content. Let's get straight into it. Well, I'm going to be using the C7 scale rules. So C7 scale and when descending, we're going to add this extra note between root and seventh. If descending from a chord note, I have a whole lesson on this, which I'll link below so you can look in more depth if you need to. But simply put, if we're descending from one of these notes on an on beat, in other words, one, two, three or four, then we add the extra note, the B, between the C and the B flat. And if we're not doing that, we don't add it. OK, hopefully it will become clearer to you if you're new to the rules as we go. If not, maybe check out that other video for some more background as well. So when you have that kind of scale, it fits really well on a 2-5, G minor 7 to C7. OK, so I've got just a track that I already have set up here and I'll give you some examples of it first. Then we'll get into a few together. is the extra note. This kind of thing, okay? So let's build a few together and I'll show you what I'm doing and why. Well, first of all, let's see. Let's create one. I think I played that when I was just de demonstrating. So I'm going one, two and three. And that's something important just there. If you're starting to build phrases, these things can be very useful. Do it really slowly at a speed where you can manage and you don't slow down for all the chord changes. But not beginning every phrase on one is very helpful. So one, two and three and four and one. Now we've had a scale phrase let's have an interval phrase we're looking to join things like scales and intervals all the time and then connective stuff like little surround notes this could be a surround note if i want to come out on c half step above a half step below or half step above scale note below that could also be another one all right so let's have one two and three and four and one and two and three and four an extra note not from the scale rules to come out on the a didn't manage to use that this time maybe we'll use that on another one so i had one two and three and four and one why these notes because these are diminished notes for a c7 some of you'll call that a c7 flat nine barry harris students will think of this more as dim diminished that goes on top of c either way same notes right so we go up those and then we came down C7 notes with a half step just to get us out on a note for the F major. So now when we put it all together, one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. This is another Barry Harris type phrase, actually. I'm pretty sure I've got a lesson on that, too. That's the four phrase. So if I do, I'll link it below. Let's try it with the track. The track is going to be a little quick for some of you. That's OK. I'm just using it to demonstrate. Let's do it one more time. OK, great. That'll be our first phrase. Let's find one more. Let's this time go up a scale, come down and see if the rule still applies. So, for example, let's pick a number one to seven. Somebody said two. So, OK, I'll take two. Let's pick another number. Um, maybe one of you said five. All right. So I'll run from the two to the five. This is on C7, right? The second degree and the fifth degree. One, two, three, four, 
why did I not need the extra note between the 1 and 7? Because 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1, 1 and 2 and 3. By the time the descend begins, I'm on a non chord note, one of these, not a C7 chord note. And therefore the rule, the extra note, is not necessary in order to come out correctly. Coming out correctly for me means that these C7 notes are on the beat, okay? That's all it means. Okay, so what do we have? Two up to five. We'll still come out on that diminished, right? Okay, let's try that with the track. Okay, next let's take something else. Okay, just, just one note up then down. Three, four, three. Now this is one of the chord notes and it has now fallen on the beat. So the extra note will apply. Let's pick a beat in the bar to begin on. We've started on one, we've started on two. Maybe we could start on four just before the bar line. One, two, three. Four and one and two and three. And then I'll improvise. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Let me see if that works again. Okay, let's do it like that. Probably easier to teach. <laughs> what I had. So one, two, three, four and one and two extra note. Up the scale. Jump down to that diminished note this time. Remember that diminished we were talking about? A jump up to A. No particular reason, just sounded pretty. Or just F major seven notes with an extension, the extra two or nine on the end. Okay, let's try that with the track and remember that it begins on four just before this bar line. One, two, three. Quite like that. Okay. Fine. There are a few phrases there already. Let's have a couple more. Maybe. So what am I doing here? I'm taking chords now from this C7 scale. This is the first chord. So you can practice in chords, right? Like this. You can build up the notes. I'm going, I'm trying to slow down at the speed I try and get my students to do it. <laughs> I'm eager to show you stuff on the video. <laughs> so I took the third chord, put a half step under it and made a triplet. So one, two, three and four triplet one. So because I'm on the one, descending now, the one of the bar, but the two of the scale, the two of the scale doesn't need the extra note, remember? So I won't need that unless I were to come further down here and cross an octave line. You'll see why. One, two, three, and four triplet. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two extra note. Why? Because the rules have got us correct. So please don't start posting in the comments, oh, it's, there's no correct and there's no incorrect. Yes, I know, but we've got to have something to work with here. So what I'm saying is, and four triplet one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. That's why we had this extra note at the bottom, because any time we cross that octave line, the extra note kicks in. We didn't need it up here because of where we began. We do need it down here because the C became an on beat on the beat. Okay, let's try that with a track. One, two, three. Okay, I'm okay with that. Let's fit in one more. Sometimes I'll do stuff with patterns. So if I take just a pattern I just invented, all right? So one, two, three, four, five. 
I'm just going to reverse the last two notes to make it one, two, three, five, four. If you find something like that, don't bin it. Don't throw it away thinking there's nothing there. There's so much you can squeeze out of everything. So take it through the scale. Remember we're in the C7 scale. So we get the B flat, right? Keep going. I think that's the one I used. No, that was the one I used. So if I take it from B flat, something like that. Let's do that. Okay, let me explain. <laughs> so this is the pattern I showed you. This comes out on the beat. One and two and three and four extra note now why did I jump up to here this is called pivoting because this could have been because I'm jumping from B flat to A or B flat to A right so if I don't jump up you'll see what happens this time and then we had a surround note remember I promised you a surround note half step above C half step below C for an exit but all I did was pivot. In other words, after the B flat, cut. Don't go down here, but come up here, right? That's the only difference. That's something that we used to do with Barry in the horns class. If the horn players ran out of notes on their saxophones or trumpets or whatever, it would cut the phrase and put it down the octave or whatever, right? And the surround note. Okay, let's see if I can do it in time. <laughs> Here we go. Not bad. Could do a better job. Let's try again. Fine. Sometimes I'll cut off the note of the first note. That sort of thing will make you swing as well. So I do recommend do it slower than I'm doing it here, right? But that's how you take the simplest amount of information without going further and further and further. I feel that people tend to overcomplicate their improvisation practice and their improv practice tends to be let's go from the beginning to the end of the tune rather than let's just take a section or a 2-5 and take a principle and find many different ways to apply that principle. That's when you get more freedom from it. And it becomes less about memory and more about having a system, a process that you can follow. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, perhaps you'll consider joining me on Jazz Skills, where we have so many lessons, a course on developing fluency for newer players, get you really solid on your chord progressions so you can dedicate some mental capacity to improv, how to get your melodies down, voicings, movements from Barry Harris, live webinars, a chance to connect with me and get real feedback on your playing as well, and a vibrant community. Thanks a lot for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.